goes a long way with uh, making sure that your your team that's playing in front of you has has the right mindset. Third time in the last four Saturdays that these teams have gone head to head. The first two in St. Louis. Uh, uh, giving Kirill Kaprizov great matches matchups here at home, giving him the best chance to have success and. He's had a little bit of a success here at home, pretty much unstoppable. Lucchini got a lot on that one, knocked aside by Bennington. Chips it off the boards, Felino back on it for Minnesota. Felino up high for Middleton, poke checked away, and the Blues have numbers at center. Neighbors with Thomas driving the middle, his pass broken up by Favor, a backhander, kicked out by Fleury, and on the rebound they score. The Blues take advantage of one of their first scoring chances in the game. And a bounce off the skate of Brock Faber. Opportunity off of the rush is a three on one and Jake Neighbors tries to feed a pass across and hits a skate and then the loose puck just pops out to him. See Brock Faber with a nice defensive play here and then Marc-Andre Fleury makes this save but Brock Faber unable to tie up Jake, Jake Neighbors stick and he deposits it. Deposit Down low Rossi tried to center hit a skate. Bogosian holds the line for Minnesota. Zuccarello just off the bench works by Hayes into the corner for Kaprizov a backhander and he sent it just wide just misses as Minnesota looks for the equalizer teams combined for just 12 goals in the first three head-to-head -head meetings six for each side here's Pareko moving in and a glove save by Flurry Getting the right-handed defenseman to go down on the back door. Kirill Kaprizov found himself puck watching there. And Colton Pareko, who just got his 10th goal of the season a couple nights ago, gets robbed there by the future Hall of Fame goaltender, Marc-Andre Fleury. So, St. Louis hit the net with 11 of 15 opportunities in the first period. Over the last two games, 58% for Minnesota. Each team looking ahead at head-to-head -head matchups with Vegas among their remaining games. The Wild will see the Golden Knights twice. The Blues will see them once. Faber jumps up in the rush, has Boldy with him at the Blues line. Boldy to Johansson. Down low, Faber centers. Johansson scores! This is the play right here. Brock just pitches it to the outside, goes to the net. Matt Boldy doing a great job of using his body, and what an unbelievable give and go there by Marcus Johansson moving to open ice, and that's a tap in. And we got a tie game, and what a big goal in this uh, in this game against the St. Louis Blues. Johansson had scored just one goal. Middleton fanned on it once. Thomas able to hold his own. Neighbors down the slot. Centers and Flurry sprawls across to get a piece of it. He's lost his glove and his stick on the play as the Wilds start back. Rossi in alone. Rossi scores. And then on the offensive side, Kirill Kaprizov finds. The young Finov right through the middle, and he's able to squeeze that one right through the wickets. All kinds of time there. Beat him five hole in St. Louis last Saturday as well. Kind of falls and trips on himself. Takes the goaltender out. Puck crosses the goal line. And we haven't seen it yet with Marco Rossi really. And these opportunities he's getting to play in these must wins down the stretch here, where you've got to be ready to play and ready to play hard every game. They go a long way with your development. The Blues tie it. A puck battle one in the faceoff circle and a redirect by Cairo beats Flurry. And St. Louis draws even 2 2. Yeah, the St. Louis Blues getting in on the four check, coming up with a loose puck. And they just shovel the puck out front there, and that's Jordan Cairo. Nice play there by Bushnevich to find. The young winger on the back door, all alone by himself. Jordan Cairo coming off a 37 goal season, knows what to do around the net, and he does a lot of his damage against the Minnesota Wild. That fires at cross ice. Sod's been hot lately, seven points in his last nine. 
Rossi comes to center, leaves it for Kaprizov. Kaprizov across, Zuccarello to Rossi. He scores! Through the neutral zone, finding Zuccarello on the far side, looking to pass. Yes, it does hit Marco Rossi's skate. I, there was no kicking motion at all right there. Thought maybe it hit the blue skate player, but that one hits Marco Rossi. 20th goal for Marco Rossi. And Minnesota leads 3-2. Nick Letty in the penalty box for a minute two to open the third period. And the Wild continue on their first power play opportunity of the game. Now, as much as Minnesota was stressing this game, didn't use the term must win, but very important. The Blues in the same spot, and Kairou with his second of the night beats Flurry from long range, and St. Louis has tied it 3-3. It looks like just a harmless little wrist shot here from Kairou. I don't know if this one changes directions or not on Marc-Andre Fleury. See Chisholm just kind of moves out there a little bit. Hard to tell whether that one just changed directions. Just Back to Kaprizov. He's tied up by Letty. Puck lands on the stick of Saad. Kairou sidesteps a check. Kairou in and scores! And the hat trick for Jordan Kairou puts the Blues in front 4-3. Hat trick a couple years ago in the outdoor game. And this is just a great player making a great play. Beats Marc-Andre Fleury on the far side. Not a whole lot of speed here. Matt Zuccarello jumps up on him. He just chips it past him. Gets a little bit extra space to move. Marc-Andre Fleury, I like his positioning, but Jordan Cairo just beats him on the far side. Focusing on what you need to do. To, to win games and focus on your own games because if you don't win enough games, it's not going to matter anyway. Middleton shot, deflected, and they score! Brock Faber on the rebound! The rookie ties it for Minnesota! Big face-off win. Jake Middleton getting the puck to the front of the net. Brock Faber jumping down on the far side, rolling puck off of a shin pad, bouncing around. Sitting on a tee for Brock Faber. Beats his check to the front of the net. Right there, gets inside position on the young kid neighbors. And puts him on his hip. No chance for Jordan Bennington. Tie bowl game. Able to keep it alive for Minnesota. They battle in the corner. Final seconds of the third. Boldy threw it out front. Caprice on the chance. Bennington down. And he's able to cover at the horn. And we're underway. Three on three. Teams went to an extra session a week ago today in St. Louis. Attack once more, but Thomas will just back it out to Shen. And if you're the Wild, you don't want to get too impatient here. Rossi takes it away. He attacks. Rossi cuts to the net. Saved by Ben. Oh, Bennington went for the pull check on Marco Rossi and Marco Rossi was able to get that shot off before the poke check came And Bennington just able to get his shoulder on it Now the wild with fresh legs on the ice Kapanen drops it back. It's poke checked away by Boldy He hustles after it with Falk back for the Blues He feeds Bennington who doesn't want a face off and even though pressured by Boldy he keeps the play alive Saad races ahead for St. Louis. Capitan back to Saad. Driving in and he scores. Brandon Saad wins it in overtime for St. Louis. And for the second time in as many weeks, the Blues win an extra session game against Minnesota. Just got his arm on that. And then this is the goal off of the rush. Brand Brandon Saad able to get a step on Matt Boldy on the far side. And he beats... Mark Andre Fleury between the wickets and the St. Louis Blues are able to skate out of St. Paul with that very, very valuable extra point here tonight. 
Second time in a week that Minnesota rallies in the third to force an extra session, but the Blues come away with the extra point.